So how do you designate the RCP to work with a specific camera? First of all, um, the commands for CCU adjustment of Blackmagic cameras, they are sent over the SDI return feed back to cameras. So all Blackmagic cameras, they have uh, all the ones that's uh, supported by the RCP uh, with the camera control protocol, they all have an SDI in. And on some cameras, it really makes good sense because the SDI in can be routed to the screen on the camera. So you can see like the program feed from the switcher or whatever else. Um, in the case of the micro studio camera, it only makes sense as a carrier of data signals because we can't see any picture on the camera. But um, uh, yeah, where was I? Uh, yeah, okay, the point was we are transporting data on the SDI return and each camera will be configured with a number. So this camera is configured to be camera number one. And if I had two cameras, the other one should have camera number two as its address. So the RCP, when it sends commands to the camera, it needs to send it to camera one or camera two. It's all over the same SDI wire generally. And Currently, we have set it up so this row of buttons on the RCP will select camera. So as I press this one, oh yeah, my panel is inactive. Oh, there you go. I just enabled the panel again and I changed to camera one. And as I pull this handle, I am changing values for uh, camera one. Okay, could I do it differently? For instance, this row of buttons are in our mind user definable. So we don't want to, uh, uh, leave you with camera selectors here because in most cases we think the RCP is uh, dedicated to individual cameras so we also integrated a camera selector here in the back so as you see we have a dip switch here with 16 addresses uh, we can't use address 0 but we can use 1 through 15 so up to 15 cameras using this selector down here and how do we change between those two different ways of setting the camera the answer is the web interface. So over here on the laptop, you can see the uh, web interface. It's loaded directly from the unit. So there's no software other than the RCP being loaded into uh, or booted into configuration mode. And it will have an internal web server that serves you this great interface. So we can see buttons uh, one through six, which are the green ones on the RCP. And uh, we want to know what they do. So as I press this one, you can see button number one, it apparently assigns a value to something called system memory. And uh, if you look in this long list, you can uh, configure the button to send commands to an ATEM switcher or a video hub. But in this case, we set the system memory for memory bank number A, and we set it to one. And then it says persist. This is a feature in the system, so it will remember it for next time we boot the unit. So you can see button number two will set also memory bank number A, but to the value two. And the same goes for button three, four, five, and six. All right, so these buttons are setting an internal register value. And the point is all the other handles. Let's just take the iris handle, for instance. So we press the iris handle here. You can see it is setting uh, the iris of the camera which value is in memory bank number A. So this makes sense now, since as I press the green buttons, which currently act as a camera selector, I change what value is in that memory cell. And as I pull the iris handle, I'm going to adjust the iris of that particular cell. Great. Okay, so, but I wanted to change. So I have the camera selector sitting on the back and uh, that was the small dip switch over here. So, um, you see, this is represented not graphically, but by this text cam select. So as I press this one, cam select, I can now go here and say, okay, I want to uh, allow the camera select to set the value of system memory A. And uh, let me just see what the options are. So I can allow it to set a value between one and um, I think this is like the maximum. So the max is gonna be 15. 
and thereby, uh, let's see, I want it to persist. Well, that doesn't matter because this is an analog component that will always boot with that particular value. So that's good. Okay, I don't need to worry about those. Basically, I've now set up the dip switch on the back of the unit to set memory A. What I also need to do, of course, is to disable that functionality from this button. So I um, will simply remove this functionality for my current camera selectors and so forth. As I then go and I save these settings to the unit and boot it again, the camera number the RCP communicates with are determined by the dip switch on the back. That's it.